Why wait to earn the degree you deserve? You have the experience. You have the knowledge. Now is the time to get the credit for the work you've done and earn the recognition you deserve by starting your comeback at Purdue Global. It's time to earn a degree you'll be proud of. A degree that employers will respect. It's never too late. Never too late to come back stronger and move forward in your career. Start your comeback today at purdueglobal.edu. Purdue's online university for working adults. A group of high school students started a project to research a string of unsolved murders. There is no profile of this killer except for the ones the students created. What if this guy's still alive? Like, what if he comes after us? Once you start getting a few tips or a few leads or a few identifications, then the cold case isn't so cold anymore. This is Murder 101. Listen to Murder 101 on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Episode 27, The Hidden Gems of Second Hand. Welcome to the Frugal Friends Podcast, where you'll learn to save money, money, embrace simplicity, and live a richer life. Here are your hosts, Jen and Jill. Yes, 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 here we go. Hey guys, welcome to the Frugal Friends Podcast. I am Jen. This right here is Jill. And that cryptic intro I gave at the beginning to the hidden gems of second hand means pawn shops. And (laughs) it's a, a little known fact that pawn shops are a great place for a deal because usually they're equated to sketchy places on the wrong side of town that you don't want to go inside. Um, yeah, pretty much always. That's that's the assumption. Yes. But luckily for you, I have been in quite a few pawn shops, <laughs> whether by choice or by force. <laughs> you have gone where the rest of us don't dare. And yes. And you've lived to report back. So... This is going to be good. Yes. I have news to report from personal experience and from the internet. So, and I can't, I can't say that I agree with everything on the internet. I can't say that any week, but we'll definitely tell you what to sift through and uh, what to actually take to heart. But first, our sponsors. But wait, a word from the sponsors. (laughs) We've talked about it in past weeks. We're going to talk about it again. This is not an official sponsors, but we are big fans of Cook Smarts. It's a meal planning service that provides you with recipes and instructions, even weekend prep and a shopping list. So they've got all different kinds of options from regular to gluten-free to paleo to vegetarian, and you can switch back and forth between them. And then if you like recipes, you can archive them. And if you don't like recipes that week, you can skip them. They right now are offering three free weeks of meal plans. So if you sign up at frugalfriendspodcast.com slash CS for Cook Smarts uh, and go on and sign up for a meal planning, you're purchase will help support this podcast. Who doesn't want to support this podcast? Um, And again, not an official sponsor, but three free weeks. Who could argue with that? Amen. Love that. And today's episode is also brought to you by televisions. A new model comes out every few months. So if you had the newest model last week, who knows if you still have the newest model? Televisions. (laughs) Oh, uh, okay. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that one oddly depressed me. Was it supposed to do that? Well, it's. I don't know. I didn't. I don't think about these before I say them. Literally, it just says televisions, and I didn't even finish typing out what I was going to say. So that was all off the cuff. Oh wow! Beautiful improvisation that brings out all sorts of emotions. Yeah. <laughs> But you will find a lot of televisions at pawn shops. And so that is why today's episode is brought to you by them. Because you walk into a pawn shop and the whole back wall or side wall is just all (laughs) television screens. Yes. Uh, And so many of these articles that I found on, on Google have strong opinions about buying electronics from pawn shops. And I tend to agree with them for the most part. But I won't spoil anything. We'll just go ahead and and get on with the 
articles. So this first one is from WikiHow. And who doesn't just read WikiHow for their exquisite art? Uh, so, <laughs> yes. right? Their images are like just too much for me. Like the one is of a woman with her hands in the air, oh, like God, saying that one's stop. The best. And way too much cleavage for a cartoon <laughs> or, right. or anyone for that matter. Goes I'm like, right why up to her in the world? Right up. Why right up did there. she need so much cleavage for a cartoon picture? So if you have not checked out WikiHow, you have to just for the pictures. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're looking at the second part of this article, because when we talk about pawn shops, we're not talking about selling your things to pawn shops. We're talking about buying from them. Mm. So sometimes I have an ethical dilemma about how how ethical are pawn shops? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I feel like I'm Where not have alone. you landed on this? Um. So I don't think that they're the best way to sell things, obviously. Uh, but for some people, they are the only method um, that they are familiar with or know of. And they just don't have access yet to the Frugal Friends podcast to hear all of the other ways that you can sell things online and mm -hmm. offline. Right. So I don't want to say that they're a necessary evil. But I can justify their existence and my shopping at them by saying that they do serve a purpose in the ecosystem. They are not as bad as check cashing places. Mm. So, and a lot of these things that these people are selling to pawn shops are things they should not have been purchasing in the first place. Um, <laughs> so that's how you justify it. Like that, that's what you get. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to seem like a horrible person. It's a gray area for me. <laughs> but we still might find you in one. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. I had never been in one until Travis brought me in one when we were dating. And I've just found them really like a really great resource for buying a lot of different things for really cheap. But there are some things you should know before you go in. And that's where this WikiHow article really sheds light on. So, Jill, yeah. being a non-pawn shopper, what did yeah. you think of this article? I would say that this has started to open the door for me to consider stepping foot into a pawn shop. So, one of the things that they listed on here is to research, which I think that's just a great tip for anything that you're doing in life to know what you're doing and what's the best way to do it. Um, but I think that this was really helpful for me to know, okay, go in there with a plan, know what you're going to buy and have researched it ahead of time. Know, know what reviews say, not only about the product that you're purchasing, but also about the pawn shop. What do, what are other people saying about the pawn shop, things that they've gotten there, the types of deals that they've yeah, I've gotten at that pawn shop. So I thought that that was helpful for me to say, oh yeah, I have this option here too, to look it up ahead of time and know where I'm going and what to expect. Yeah. The place you're most likely to find reviews is just to um, search pawn shops on Google Maps, and then it'll list all the pawn shops with their ratings. And granted, you have to take it with a semi-grain of salt because a lot of the people uh, reviewing them are people that are selling to them and are right. not getting the price that they want or or whatever. Uh. So I, I would say if you it's if it's like a three star or above, then you should be safe. Okay. I, you don't wow. need to stick with just four and five star pawn shops just because of the review bias. Oh, that's helpful. Yeah. So yeah. Google re reviews is mm -hmm. really easy. I also, something that stood out to me was negotiating. Mm -hmm. For me, this is not something that you can do at a thrift store, which I love thrift stores. It's kind of taking it to the next level of confidence in your purchasing and it, in your ability to kind of push back on a price. So if negotiating isn't your thing, then I would imagine pawn shops probably wouldn't be your thing. But it does add a layer of excitement for me to know that I can go in and haggle any price in the store. So that might just get me in the door. Yes. And you really can. I have negotiated a better deal on several things 
including even if they won't go down on the price of something, then I'll find a smaller item and ask, hey, will you throw this in with this? Um, So there's two. Yeah, there's there's several options for negotiating. And one of them includes number four on this list, which is bring cash. So you can definitely negotiate a better deal if you bring cash. Mm. Um, and I'll, I'll share my story of my engagement ring later. Um, but even for big items, um, high price items or low price items, uh, if you bring cash, that definitely helps your negotiating power. And it can keep you in budget too. If you know mm-hmm. that you're only spending X amount of dollars, then you're not going to go above that. Yeah, there's a yeah. lot of reasons for cash. Yeah. Right. Another another reason the ethics of pawn shops are in the gray area for me, because I don't know why cash helps your negotiating power. Um, I don't want to know, but I'll bring <laughs> cash. And um, and also they will a lot of the bigger pawn shops, and I tend to stick with the larger brand name, um, well known shops versus the mom and pop shops. Mm. Um, they'll do a thing where it's one price if you're buying it soon after it's put on the shelf like and that's maybe about a month uh, and then if it's been there for a month the second month it's a little bit lower price and if you can see that it's coming up on the edge of being there you know it's second or third month that also helps with your negotiating hmm. how can you know how long it's been there for they just put one sticker on everything uh, and it says I actually still have the sticker on a charger. But it's like from this date to this date, it's this price. This date to this date, it's this price. Oh. So it's just one sticker for all the prices. So you'll know okay. uh, when kind of like how getting- thrift stores will put, you know, a purple or yellow or orange tag, and then you'll get the different sales yep. for, for the different colors. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, another tip I liked on here was just the freedom to walk away. That you owe them nothing. Even if you've been back and forth in a negotiation battle and you're not getting where you want to get on the pricing, that you can walk away. Like you you don't, yeah, you're not chained to that item. You don't owe them anything. Don't feel the pressure to stick around and give them money. I think that's an important thing to remember in, in any purchasing situation, yeah. but especially one where someone is very emotionally invested in selling you something and and maybe putting pressure on you and who knows what else. Yeah. <laughs> but feel free to walk away. Yeah. Well, also the good thing about pawn shops is I've never felt pressured to buy anything. The people oh, that really? work there are just store associates. They don't get paid on commission. You know, they're just there. Okay. So there's no real pressure for you to buy anything from them, Mm. but they are pretty helpful. They'll open things up and and show you things. But walking away is also another good negotiating technique because normally you can walk away from something, even if you don't intend to walk away from it, and then just come back in a little bit and, and get the, you know, lowest price you negotiated for if they won't like throw something else in or lower the price anymore. Mm -hmm, But mm -hmm. walking away and maybe taking a lap around the store and and seeing if there's anything else can maybe help cool them off and either give you the price you want or help you get the price you had. You know, it, it doesn't work every time, but it's definitely worth trying. Yeah. And you can make the hand signal that this lady is making in this this picture. Close your eyes and just put both of your hands out. (laughs) Yep. That's awesome. So the last one on this list, so we went over research, negotiate, bring cash, and don't be afraid to walk away. But the last one on this is know what you want. And I tend to, while I don't love uh, the idea of browsing for browsing's sake, with a pawn shop, you almost have to. Mm -hmm. Because it's not like a store you can just go in and you know they'll have everything. They have different things at different times. So we'll be passing by a pawn shop that we know is reputable. We know we've gotten something good from there before. And if we're just passing by, we'll, we'll stop in to see what they have. Obviously, we have a list of our own of things that we are either thinking about purchasing uh, or want to purchase in the future. And even if those things may not be of immediate need, if they are there and we do have the money, then it's worth it to to get it for the better deal. 
Uh. Yeah, there are things that pawn shops just always have, Mm -hmm. but then there are some things that are a little more rare. Yeah. So. I guess I haven't even really, I, th- I feel like I have a vague memory of being in a pawn shop once, but it's all, it's kind of like how you remember a dream where it's like a little hazy and it's weird <laughs> and like y- it kind of makes you feel sweaty. That's like what my memory is. So I don't know if I actually was in a pawn shop or if it was a dream, but <laughs> it was hazy way. and you were sweaty <laughs> and it was weird. <laughs> yeah. I don't think you were in a good pawn shop if it was real. Yeah, exactly. I don't want to go back there. That's all I know. Yeah. Yeah. Either don't go way, back to that one. I don't remember being able to walk through aisles of things. I only remember things being behind shelves, like or being behind the display cases and then shelves of things behind the uh, sales associates. I don't ever remember there being aisles of things. Is is that how a pawn shop is? Like, describe it yeah. to me. Yeah. So there are aisles. Um, there are a lot of things behind the counter uh, that are of higher value. And then you'll have, like, electronics on one side. You'll have a section that's just, like, outdoor tools and, like, appliance things. You'll have a section of kitchen appliances, a large section of DVDs. Usually behind the counter, you have the smaller, more expensive things like phones and iPads, video game consoles. That's usually the typical things you'll find Mm. at a pawn shop. But yes, there are aisles in the smaller ones, I guess. Maybe there wouldn't be aisles, but in the bigger ones, the ones I'm talking about, there definitely are. Okay. So, and they're not not done this together. We've got to do this together, maybe even document it. Yeah. Next time we're together, we will go into one of the good pawn shops that's, okay. that won't make you sweat. <laughs> Thank you. Or feel hazy yeah. or weird. Right. <laughs> Thank right. you. If don't. That's a sign of a bad one. So don't do that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. We've been through the steps of how you should go about working up to shopping in a pawn shop. How about we go through the do's and don'ts of actual pawn shopping? So Let's like do it. items and stuff. So Let's do it. Uh, this one is from Brad's Deals, and it's the do's and don'ts of pawn shop shopping. Anything on here surprise you or intrigue you, Jill? Uh, the shopping online stood out to me. So for a person who maybe hasn't been in a pawn store or a pawn store has made you feel sweaty and weird, then this would be a good introduction. I mean, there's nothing quite like being able to handle an item and know whether or not it's what you want. But to some degree, I think looking at things online and having that be an introduction to it, if you don't actually want to step foot in the store... Yeah, I didn't know that that was possible. So it's something that I'm intrigued by and would want to try out. Yeah, I am intrigued by them too. Since I have been in so many, I would be less likely to do online pawn shopping just because Mm. I prefer to feel the things in my hand and test them out and haggle face to face. But for people that don't like that, but still want to try and get a deal, Mm -hmm. these are good options. I might look at some reviews and stuff just to make sure. But Brad's Deals is a pretty reputable website. So if they're listing them, I would hope that they would be trustworthy. Right. Yeah. You let us know if you've ever pawn shopped online. Yeah. I'm curious about that. We know New Year's resolutions often don't stick. In fact, on average, they last around 30 days. So if saving money is on your 2024 resolution list, here's a foolproof way to stick to yours. Switch your phone provider to Mint Mobile. For a limited time, wireless plans from Mint Mobile are $15 a month when you purchase a three-month plan. That's unlimited talk, text, and data for $15 a month. For those of you paying close to 40 bucks a month for just one phone line, This means a savings of $300 over the course of the year. We especially like Mint because all plans come with unlimited talk and text and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. To get this new customer offer and your new three-month unlimited wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash frugal. That's mintmobile.com slash frugal. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash frugal. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. AI might be the most important new computer technology 
ever. It's storming every industry, and literally billions of dollars are being invested. So buckle up. The problem is that AI needs a lot of speed and processing power. So how do you compete without costs spiraling out of control? It's time to upgrade to the next generation of the cloud, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, or OCI. OCI is a single platform for your infrastructure, database, application development, and AI needs. OCI has four to eight times the bandwidth of other clouds, offers one consistent price instead of variable regional pricing, and of course, nobody does data better than Oracle. So now you can train your AI models at twice the speed and less than half the cost of other clouds. If you want to do more and spend less, like Uber, 8x8, and Databricks Mosaic, take a free test drive of OCI at oracle.com slash strategic. That's oracle.com slash strategic. oracle.com slash strategic. For this article, I have done almost every don't. (laughs) <laughs> as far as what to buy, what to yes, buy, what yes. not to buy at pawn shops. Yeah, I liked that list. I think it was helpful, but apparently not not the guide Jen uses. No, it's I didn't read this before I went. Um, so some <laughs> of the don'ts include uh, don't show up uninformed, which sometimes I do when I'm just browsing and don't buy personal electronics. The laptop I'm currently recording this podcast on is from a pawn shop. It was one of those rare finds because it's a MacBook Air and I tested it out. So there are guides online to testing like laptops and personal electronics. So I made sure everything worked from camera to mic to browser. Um, I even called Apple to see if the model was refurbished or reported stolen Whoa, you did this wall at the pawn shop? You were able to use it and all that within the shop? Yep. Oh, So laptops are outside of the the back so that you can play with them. Like I said, the associates are super chill. So they're all about, I mean, he even tried to help me find online where to call and, and get, you know, the info on if it's stolen or not. Oh, cool. Yeah. And so then I ended up calling and finding out. And then I got a, they have the option for a two-week or four-week warranty. I sprung for the two-week warranty um, and I've had it for about a month and uh, it's been all good. So I was a little less wary of buying a Pond Electronic because I've also bought my last laptop that lasts me five years from someone on Craigslist. Mm. So I've done my due diligence, but I've had good luck with buying personal electronics secondhand. Sure. Yeah. And this says don't do it unless you know what you're looking for. And so that that sounds like it's you and could be people who are listening to this. If you know about cell phones and laptops and tablets and gaming systems, you know what you're looking at, you know what to look for, then sure, try it out. Right. The thing is that they tell you about in this article is that who knows the type of people who are selling at pawn shops, it could be stolen property. And that's where you would hope that the good reviews and the owners would be screening for that kind of thing. Yeah. And that's another reason to go to a reputable pawn shop Mm -hmm. uh, because they don't buy things that can be checked to be stolen. Sure. Like bikes and uh, electronics, they will check those with the local police department before they buy them. So, and this was a a Cash America. It's a large uh, brand of pawn shops. So I felt very confident. So your best bet is to not buy personal electronics, but as somebody who has and has to date, knock on wood, (laughs) no wood around me. No wood around um, you. (laughs) <laughs> I haven't had any issues. Um, and, and Travis has bought gaming systems that have also worked well. So mm-hmm. you just have to go with your gut, make sure you're at a reputable place that doesn't make you feel sweaty. And you, <laughs> yeah, you should be okay. Um, but another reason not to buy personal electronics might be that the ones that are there are older. Like I said earlier, there's a new television brand model like every four months or something. Uh, so by the time you buy it and it's it's not as discounted as if you would get it on Craigslist or something, right? then there's already a new, cheaper version, brand new. 
Right. That's another thing to be aware. Just do research on the model, how much it's selling for on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace, um, and then also how much brand new ones are selling for in Best Buy and stuff like that. Nice. Good tips. You also did this other don't, didn't you? <laughs> did the other don't. <laughs> uh, don't buy jewelry or watches. Uh, guilty and guilty for both. <laughs> um, <laughs> the article says jewelry is probably the first thing you think of when you hear the words pawn shop. But I can see what the article is saying. It's because you're likely to get ripped off. That's the biggest thing. Mm-hmm. I got my engagement ring from a pawn shop. It's beautiful. I love it. I wouldn't change it for the world. But we went to a pawn shop that specifically only did jewelry. So it was one of those shops where everything was behind the case because it was all jewelry, uh, pond or estate jewelry. Um, They had a few like purses and accessories on on one side. Right. It's a locally owned jewelry only pawn shop. Oh, interesting. Okay. And they've been around for a really long time. So I felt confident going into that place uh, because that's all they do. Mm -hmm. And we were able to get a really great deal. It was marked at Mm $1,500, but our budget was $700. And I was like not budging. Oh, man. It's like uh, half the price that they listed. I know. I know. And um, they're like, if you bring back cash, we'll give it to you for $750. Oh. Yep. So best believe we went out and got cash and best and got believe. that ring. Yeah. No. Um, and then we had it appraised privately yeah. and it was appraised for, I think, 3000 or 3500 Whoa. That's yeah. Amazing. Somewhere in there. Yeah. It's another thing that I would uh, get a warranty for if it is possible, um, either, you know, two week or 30 day, whatever. Through um, the pawn in- shop? Through the pawn shop. Yeah. And in that time, go get an appraisal. Mm. So if it's not worth what they're telling you it's worth or what you paid for, then you can bring that appraisal back and get your money back. And about how much would a warranty cost, do you think, for something like that from the pawn shop? So my two-week warranty on my laptop cost about 30, 35 bucks. Okay. And so then a month-long one was about 60, I believe. Mm -hmm. But that was for a five hundred twenty dollar laptop, right? Um, so it would just depend on the jewelry you're getting and then who you're getting it from. Okay, so it's good to ha- know an appraiser then, right? Yes, <laughs> yes, that, or at least that know where would to cost go. You too. You'd pay for the yep. warranty, then you'd pay for the appraiser. So, kind of factoring that into the cost of whatever it is that you're purchasing would be important. Yeah. But still way cheaper than buying sure. a $3,500 ring. Sure. Oh, you know, absolutely. From K Jewelers or something. Right. And this one's definitely more ornate and prettier than anything I, that we would have been able to afford yeah, before. Yeah, it's beautiful. And then Travis is also, <laughs> I just found out right before we recorded, he got a watch at a pawn shop, a smart watch, and got it, oh gosh, maybe two weeks ago. Uh And didn't tell me. And (laughs) then his secret life of pawn shop purchase. I really felt like this was a secret life moment. (laughs) And then sold it about a week later. Like he's doing his own pawn pawning of things. I guess. I don't know. Oh my goodness. He didn't tell me what profit he made. He just told me that he did that just before we started recording. Do you think he made a profit? Maybe he's been keeping it from you because he didn't make a profit. I don't know. I'm anticipating that he made a profit because that's <laughs> what he does. That's his like hobby. Oh my goodness. But yeah. So if you can find a really good deal like that and then resell it, then by all means go for it. Um, that's not what I'm into, but he said the watch worked fine. And uh, yeah, <laughs> that's, so I hope that I puts love it. your that's mind like at his, ease. His side life, what he chooses to do. Yes. Let's go through some of the do's so I don't feel yeah. like weird. Because we've also bought all of the do's. Nice. Do buy DVDs and video games. Those are really good. You'll find a wealth of those. Mm-hmm. Do buy tools, uh, lawnmowers, power drills, you name it. Oh, they're so good. And they are so cheap. 
You should Actually, never pay full yeah, price. I think that he bought, Travis bought a power tool from a pawn shop when we were out there helping he you did. fix things since the hurricane. He did. Yes. Yeah. I remember that. And he uses that. That was a really good buy. That's great. And then do buy bikes. So there are a lot of bikes. If you are buying from a smaller pawn shop, you'll definitely want to check the local police database for bikes. Mm. Again, you're a reputable pawn shop will do this before they even buy the bike. Yeah. But it's just good to do in your own due diligence in checking. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this article gives links to sites that you can check the bike on to make sure that it wasn't a stolen bike. But that's great. I didn't realize that pawn shops would have that large of items to sell. Yeah. I mean, I've seen definitely large outdoor things like lawnmowers, leaf blowers, generators, and indoor appliances like bread makers, blenders, like really nice ones, juicers. Right. So if you are thinking about buying an item that might cost you a couple hundred bucks in a store, that is the time to head to a pawn shop first Uh because chances are somebody else bought that and tried to pawn it. (laughs) <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Anything else about uh, this article that you like, Jill? That's all. I'm really feeling um, moving into the best time of the week. Ah, okay. I I agree. <laughs> okay. Is it that time? I Is think it it's time? time. It's time for, for the, the Bill of the Week. week. It's time for the best minute of your entire week. Maybe a baby was born and his name is William. Maybe you paid off your mortgage. Maybe your car died and you're happy to not have to pay that bill anymore. Duck bills, Buffalo bills, Bill Clinton. This is the bill of the week. You guys, today I want to do my own bill because I thought of this one this weekend And I was going to put it in our Facebook community group, but I was like, no, nobody will love this bill as much as I love it. I mean, somebody maybe, but keep it for your own. I love it so much that this is the bill that I want to do. So my bill of the week this week is Bill Curtis, the scorekeeper and judge of Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me and narrator of my favorite movie, Anchorman. Have you seen that, Jill? I have seen it. Yes. So he is the sultry voice uh, that you can hear narrating it. And now he is the scorekeeper and judge of my favorite podcast and NPR show, Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me. And at the beginning of every show, he says this really corny, some kind of really corny pun with his name in it. And Uh I heard it this weekend and I was like, "How how did nobody ever think of this? For their bill of the week. And so that's my bill. That's amazing. I have heard that. Like he, yeah, he does all kinds of things with his name. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I'd be able to imitate it. I just remember hearing Bill a lot on the Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me podcast. That's amazing. I'm glad for your enthusiasm, mostly. Thank you. Thank you for letting me share my bill. And we will get back to everybody else's bills i promise <laughs> on the next episode just needed to interrupt for bill yes. curtis yes uh so if you want to leave yours uh so that i don't have to put any more bills up like bill curtis you can go to frugalfriendspodcast.com slash bill and leave us your favorite bill maybe you listen to wait wait don't tell me and you want to share one of bill curtis's like favorite bill puns and i would also love that <laughs> Amazing. Endless opportunities is what we're saying with this segment. Always. You know that, though. It's never too late. Never too late to earn a degree. Never too late for a comeback. Between your busy career and taking care of a family, it can feel like there's never a good time to go back to school. But your time is now. Time to start your comeback with Purdue Global. As Purdue's online university for working adults, Purdue Global is dedicated to supporting adults like you who know it's time to earn the recognition you deserve. You have the experience. You have the knowledge. It's time to get credit for the work you've done. You can balance work, family, and everything in between while earning your degree. 
It's time to move forward in your career, for your family and for yourself, with a degree you're proud of, a degree that employers will recognize and respect. You're worth this investment in yourself to earn a degree you deserve. It's never too late, never too late to go back to school and come back stronger with an education you can trust. Now is the time for your comeback. Start yours today at purdueglobal.edu. We all agree that reducing carbon emissions is a good thing. And once again, Toyota is leading the way. We hear a lot about fully electric vehicles and Toyota has them with more on the way. But we also know a BEV is not for everyone, whether it's because of cost, range, or concern about finding a charging station when you need it. Plus, the raw materials used to manufacture batteries are limited. Enter Beyond Zero, Toyota's vision for a carbon-neutral future, in vehicles and in manufacturing plants, too, in the years ahead. The materials used to make just one long-range battery for an EV could be used to make batteries for six plug-in hybrids or 90 gas-electric hybrids. That's why Toyota's position today is electrified diversified, empowering you to choose how to reduce your own carbon footprint with the vehicle that's right for you a hybrid, plug-in hybrid, or battery EV. So shop, learn more, and get details at toyota.com slash beyond zero. Toyota, let's go places. <laughs> All right, Jill. Let's talk experience. You yes. know I have none. This uh, is a lightning round. <laughs> you, you, you know I have no experience with pawn shops other than my sweaty one. And... Really, yeah, up until now, I have held to this fact that pawn shops are a little gaudy. They got pictures of gold all over them. Sometimes they also double as like a buy slash sell gold place or they will sell bail bonds and yep. all sorts of things can be happening in a pawn store. Not to mention it's not helped at all by the fact that TV has latched on to this you know innuendo that pawn sounds very similar to something else and you've got pawn stars and hardcore pawn and I'm just like okay this is a little skeevy and not making me want to go to a pawn store anymore but well you can stop listening to the episode and turn it off (laughs) but you might be changing my mind on this jen uh the closest i've ever gotten to a pawn store is a consignment store they're kind of similar right but that is actually where eric bought my engagement ring was at a consignment store so maybe not quite as skeevy as a pawn store but no not at all not in the least (laughs) still secondhand I think the skeevy impression that pawn shops get might work in our favor because the fewer people going means the more inventory and the more opportunity for you to get a deal right so so I mean keep keep everybody else out and let us keep getting our deals I like that I like that mentality Yeah, if you don't need a bail bond, don't get a a bail bond or go into one that that sells them or you don't have to buy gold there. You You don't have to sell your gold. You could just go in and and buy yourself uh, a nice belt. Yep. Sometimes they'll have belts. They'll have purses (laughs) for sure. Um, But yeah, so I think that it could, it's worth going into one, like one of the bigger names and uh, and trying it out. So yeah. that's that is my encouragement to you. But so I I talked about a few things that I've bought at pawn shops, like my engagement ring. That's probably my favorite thing. My laptop is my second favorite thing. We also bought a indestructible Bluetooth speaker. So Whoa. we were looking at this Bluetooth speaker and. Literally, I mean, we research things while we're in the pawn shop to get the price, to get reviews of the product. Thank you, smart the specs. Yeah. Uh, so that's definitely something you should do when you're inside the pawn shop. Again, nobody cares. They're not on commission. So we, we look and we find this video of this Bluetooth speaker literally being blown up. Oh, my goodness. Exploded. 
and it still worked. <laughs> Do so. you foresee yourself being in an explosion and, and still really needing your Bluetooth speaker to survive that? No, but it's comforting to know that it would, <laughs> that I could still listen to music while I'm being blown up. Good point. Yeah. We've gotten all of Travis's tools. So especially power drills, power saws, those things can be really expensive at Home Depot and Lowe's mm-hmm. and you can get them for a major discount at pawn shop. And uh, if that's something that you want to start with on our home maintenance episode, we were talking about how we were surprised there's so many homes that don't have a power drill. And this is a way to get one for not a lot of money, like a good mm-hmm. quality one yeah. for not a lot of money. So that's definitely a place to start. You'll definitely be, you'll probably be safe there. There are definitely varying degrees of pawn shop and trustworthiness. So we've gotten a Chromecast. We use that. Video game systems. Travis got a pilot headset. We got a copy of P90X for a dollar. Okay. Take that, Beachbody. Yeah. (laughs) That Exercise, we didn't use. Exercising on a dime. Right? We wasted $1 on it instead of 60 <laughs> I like that. Right? And then we got a typewriter, too. Really cute typewriter and a Aww. little carrying case. Yeah. That's fun. So that, that's just some of the things that are available to you at a pawn shop. There are really limitless possibilities. Maybe not limitless. Not, not Definitely not limitless. Yeah. A lot of them, though. A Uh lot of possibilities. Uh Possibilities you may not even want. Options that you wish weren't options. Like bail bonds. (laughs) Depending, Depending on who you are. Yeah. I hope that this episode has given you the courage. The next time you're at a well-lit, brightly colored pawn shop that seems commercialized and not sketchy, (laughs) that you will walk inside. And take a browse. And and report back to us on how it went. Yes. And if you have bought something from a pawn shop and had a good experience or even a bad experience and you need you want to share a tip to avoid your prior pain, visit us in the Facebook group, frugalfriendspodcast.com slash group. And we are definitely going to be chatting more about this in the Facebook group. So that is our episode for today. That's it. That's all. That's it. Yeah. And (laughs) as always, we are still doing the Frugal Friends Book Club. We're reading Your Money or Your Life by Vicki Robin and Joe Dominguez. Uh, And we're still giving away November's book. We're we're about to hand that out soon. It's almost the end of the month. I know. I can't believe it. If If you want a free copy of November's book, we are giving it away, just like she said. For every five reviews, we'll give one away. There's no limit to that. So to enter, leave us a review on your podcast listening device. Again, this is not just iTunes. Wherever you listen to us, screenshot your review and email it to us at frugalfriendspodcast at gmail.com. And we will select the winners for this book at the end of the last day of the month. Yeah. And the book is The More of Less by Joshua Becker who you may have heard of and you may be hearing more from. Ooh, what does that mm-hmm. mean? It's so cryptic Crypt- and mysterious. Cryptic. Mm. So if you want uh, an example of a review, if you're like, I really want to do this, I want to review you guys, I want an opportunity for a free book, but I have no idea what that means. How do I give a good review? (laughs) Well, here you go. It looks like a five-star review, similar to Jules66 Review, who calls this fun, quirky banter. Jen and Jill's funny, quirky banter about their frugal living is so enjoyable to listen to. They also give actionable advice on how to live a frugal life and have their own debt-free journeys so you know their practical advice is worth listening to thanks for the laughs on my morning drive to work ladies you're welcome jewel 66 welcome i'm glad that you listened to us in the car on your drive uh we hope it's a good safe drive and that you're learning a lot and that you also join us in our Facebook group and we can hear more from all of you guys who are giving us such great reviews. Yes. And thank you for telling everyone that we banter because <laughs> yeah. this is the Frugal Friends podcast, not the Frugal Information 
and no fun podcast. So <laughs> preach it. Which I thought about naming it that, uh, but I like alliterations. So <laughs> friends is what it ended up being. Yeah, we we could have been very serious with no banter, but then alliteration happened. So then you know we yeah. became quirky. Yeah. Thank you so much for hanging out with us and being quirky uh, and bantering with us in the group. And if you like our friendship and you want to be friends with us, subscribe by hitting the subscribe button wherever you're listening to this. And we will come at you every Friday uh, with more frugal fandom. Until next week. Bye bye. Until then. Frugal Friends is produced, edited, and mixed by Eric Siriano. Closing time. Cards are on the table and it's getting to quarter past nine. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. (laughs) The mantra of every bartender ever now. (laughs) Yeah. I remember saying that so many times. Because of the song or yes, because, because of, the song. of your feelings? Well, well, I mean, the I song mean, the just song. accurately depicts every bartender's feelings when the bar closes. <laughs> yeah. So it's, I always found it quite sweet and nurturing. Like, I don't, like, you can go wherever you want. You know, it doesn't have to be home. Where do you want to go? It just, you just can't stay here. It's just like, it's a very kind way of saying like, this is wrapping up, but that doesn't mean that your fun has to wrap up. You can keep having fun, just not here. But Frugal Friends doesn't do that because we say, um, see you on the Facebook group. Like we basically never stop. It's never closing time. Yep. It's like really earning that $3 an hour. See you later. Uh, from your ears and hello on the internet. Three dollars an hour when you work twenty four hours a day yeah. is a lot, right? Yeah, it's panning out for us, Jen. Amen. A group of high school students started a project to research a string of unsolved murders. There is no profile of this killer except for the ones the students created. What if this guy's still alive? Like, what if he comes after us? Once you start getting a few tips or a few leads or a few identifications, then the cold case isn't so cold anymore. This is Murder 101. Listen to Murder 101 on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Discover the heartwarming and hilarious world of sibling connections on Sibling Revelry with Kate Hudson and Oliver Hudson. Dive into family tales, explore the human mind, and laugh with guests like Joel and Benji Madden. It's more than a podcast. It's a celebration of the ties that bind us. And it's fun because we've decided to open it up to really like all kinds of different siblings. And it's going to be an awesome season. Listen to Sibling Revelry with Kate Hudson and Oliver Hudson on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.